Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to SBR lecture this is the first SBR lecture that we are going to cover as you all know the my current subscribers know that I have already uploaded lectures and division key solutions on SBR before but now I'm going to uh, bring back SBR again in a different way of teaching the reason is because I have got many uh, what do I say feedback from students that I collect that uh, maybe I was reading from the textbook you know uh, so I thought that you know why not change my style because maybe it was not fitting for some students it's just that I want every one of you to benefit from it not just few students who are passing and there's nothing wrong with it okay i still have the sbr lectures before you still can use it for your next setting which is from september 2022 but it's just the way of presenting will be changed and uh, so this lecture that i'm going to start will be in a separate playlist and it will be sbr lectures uh, from september 2022 to June 2023 and my previous lectures which I have already covered on SBR is SBR lectures just SBR lecture there is no year or anything those are previous uh, so when I'll be finishing uploading the new ones for example conceptual framework now people will be confused because I have to one before now it's the same but the way I'm presenting the way I'm explaining things are a little bit changed okay nothing wrong so that is changed this is more like I'm trying to bring it in terms of asset, liability, equity, income and expense. So these are the five elements of financial statements. We went through this. Now we are going to go through the definition of each. Asset is a present economic resource controlled by an entity as a result of past event. That means to recognize something as an asset in your financial statements, you should control it okay and it should result because of some past event for example you have paid cash to buy a machinery okay because you have paid cash that's why you are getting that machinery some past event must have happened that's why you got the control of that resource right so that is a definition of an asset liability is a present obligation where transfer of an economic resource as a result of past event Okay, that means transfer of an economic resource means cash should go out, outflow for resource. In the asset, present economic resource, cash is coming in. You understanding? Liability, it's a cash outflow. You have to pay in cash. For example, you are paying to your creditor. It's a liability because you have an obligation to pay to your creditor within 12 months. Because you have taken on credit from the supplier in the past. Because of that, now you have to pay in cash in future. So you have a present obligation to pay in cash because you have bought a good on credit from your creditor. Equity is asset minus liability. That is why it is known as residual interest. Residual means after deducting a liability from your asset in the net asset of an entity. Okay. Income. Increase in assets or decrease in liability. Something which increases your asset. Something which decreases your liability is an income. Okay. Which will increase your equity but it excludes those contributions from equity if you are having any contributions from equity holders it is not considered as an income excluded same for expenses is the other way it's the opposite of income it decreases your asset it increases your liability for example interest on loan loan is a liability but interest on that loan is an expense why because it reduces it increases your liability because interest will be added with your principal amount of loan you have to pay so it increases your liability it decreases your asset how because to pay that interest cash is going out so cash is asset cash is decreasing amount of loan that you have to pay is increasing so the decrease in asset liability is increasing hence equity will decrease again same like income it excludes distributions to equity holders okay distributions to equity holders means any dividends and all that you have to pay to equity holders they are not taken as an expense dividends are not expenses okay we are moving on to the recognition de-recognition when to recognize when to de-recognize very important from here onwards 
recognition, de-recognition, measurement, measurement base, presentation, disclosure, all these things from here onwards is very important for the rest of your SBR. You understood this, you understood SBR. So you recognize, when do you recognize something in the financial statements? If it meets the definition of any one of the elements, what are the elements? Income, expense, equity, asset, liability. Out of this five, if it meets the definition of any of this element, then that item is recognized in the financial statements. But, but not all items that meets the definitions are recognized. Sometimes it might meet the definition of an asset, but it is still not recognized. Example like what? Internally generated goodwill. Right? Second, you need to know elements are recognized if recognition provides users with useful financial information. So, after first, it should meet the definition of an element. That should that means it should either be an asset, income, equity, asset, liability, equity, income, or expense. Number one. Number two, once it is categorized out of this five, then comes that you need to recognize only if that recognition provides users with some useful information. What does it mean? In other words, it should provide users with relevant information as well as it should give faithful representation. If this two, the fun, remember the fundamental characteristics of useful financial information, it should meet those two characteristics. If it meets, then you can recognize. Even after it meets the element, sometimes it might not be recognized. Remember, just because it's an asset does not mean it will be recognized as an asset. No, you have to make sure that even if it's an asset, for example, is it giving a relevant information? If it gives the relevant information, is it faithfully representing as an asset? If so, yes, you recognize. Go ahead. If not, there itself you stop. No, do not recognize. Okay, then recognition might not provide relevant information sometimes. How do you know whether it provides relevant information or not? When you are very unsure, when you are uncertain about the existence of that asset. We are not sure whether you own that asset or not. You are not sure whether that asset is existing or not then it cannot be a relevant information then you should not recognize it and also if there's a low probability of inflow or outflow that means chances of you receiving cash if it's an asset or if it's a liability chances of you paying that cash is very low then you then there is no chance of you recognizing it because if you recognize it also it will not give a relevant information understanding one is the existence uncertainty to existence the other one is low probability of inflow or flow then recognition of an element might not provide a faithful representation if there's a very high degree of measurement uncertainty that means you cannot measure it very correctly uncertainty is so much in that measurement of that asset or liability or whatever it is then even if you recognize it it will not give a faithful representation Measuring it is very uncertain, very difficult to measure something. Then, if an asset or liability is not recognized at all, then what, what do you do? You just cannot forget about asset or liability. Saying, okay, it's not recognized and forget about it. No, you still need to make a disclosure regarding that asset or liability that you have not recognized it. So that users understand what could be the implications of that asset or liability in the future, in the future earnings or future cash flow. Maybe not currently it's not having an impact, but in the future it might have an impact. Understanding. So before we go to the derecognition, let us do a small question. Test your understanding one. So here you need to discuss the extent to which the accounting treatment of the bottle brand is consistent with the conceptual framework. This is how you are going to get a question on conceptual framework if you are asked in SBR exam. The reason why we are studying conceptual framework is we'll be studying IFRS, okay, the accounting treatment on a particular IFRS standard, and we need to compare it with the conceptual framework's treatment, whether it is consistent or it is differing. Okay, some standard it is consistent, some it is differing. You need to know that very clear. So let us start with this question. This is regarding the your intangible assets. Okay, IS 38. So we are talking about a brand here, which is internally generated. So let's read a little bit about it. Bottle operates in the publishing industry. Brand is highly respected and as a result, book published by the bottle receives extensive coverage both on because it has a, it is highly respected. 
okay the brand it received extensive coverage both online as well as in international and national press okay but this brand is internally generated that aspect that they have got the brand you didn't acquire it from anyone it is internally generated okay so is 38 which is intangible asset we still didn't go in uh, detail in is 38 okay we'll be covering it later when i go to a particular in the individual standards but for now we know from the knowledge of our financial reporting that is 38 is for intangible asset okay is 38 what does is 38 says about intang uh, internally generated intangible asset if you remember recall the knowledge of a financial reporting here because in S because in sbr we still didn't cover is 38 we have a long way to cover is 38 it says internally generated uh, intangible assets or internally generated goodwill you do not recognize is 38 says that now is it consistent with the conceptual framework also that's what you need to answer okay so it is not recognized in the both of financial statements because is 38 says so okay now we'll see the answer so if you see the answer before we come to the actual answer you should know how to present your answer how to write this answer what is the question says is it consistent one might say yes it is consistent one might say it is not consistent but that's not how you answer sbr answer that's what i wanted to take you through this i want to first show you how an answer looks like looks a little uh, you know you might be thinking what is it this long how did they write this long that's because you are still in the beginning stage in sbr as as you go along you know you will come up you will be having more confidence on how to write answers but because this is your first question in sbr first lecture first question you are doing i will slowly take you through this okay i'm going to go a bit slow here you need to come you need to know how to come up with the answers how to present so number one rule you need to write in paragraphs it is not one essay okay format you first need to understand that you need to write it in different paragraphs this answer you cannot write in one paragraph and finish it off this is not an essay writing understand this not only in sbr in your professional level paper all your professional level papers are like that whether it is afm whether it is triple a whether it is atx whether it is the sbl sbr anything you need to write in paragraphs number one but how do you know which paragraph to write and how how many paragraphs to write how do you divide that you need to decide how do you decide you need to have a flow chart in your mind how you are going to write this answer okay where do you start what is the main topic about intangible asset what intangible asset be very specific don't write uh, general answers specifically you need to write specific the whole thing is what we are talking about let's break down this further okay internally generated goodwill it's an intangible asset only right but what internally generated goodwill they gave a name don't just write internal generated goodwill internal generated good no what is it brand break it down further this is not an answer i'm just showing you the breakdown first you need to know the breakdown to come to this answer don't jump to the answer at the initial stage you will not understand anything and don't even memorize the answer it will not help you at all because let me tell you sbr questions they will never repeat the questions they will always change the question okay this is the way of breaking down your answer to know how to write answer first you need to know so be very specific never write general answers what internal general good with the brand so how do you start define de define brand that is your first paragraph you start defining that specific thing in sbr especially in sbr obviously in other subjects are there but let's not touch about other subjects let's talk about sbr sbr you need to define it what define what define whether it's an asset liability equity income or an asset or, or an expense sorry 
What is it? What is a brand? In this case, entire a goodwill, it's a brand. What is it? Out of this five elements that you have just studied, what is it? It's an asset. Problem solved, it's an asset. You know what is an asset? You know the definition of an asset? From where? From where? Conceptual framework. From conceptual framework, you know the definition of an asset. So apply that to the brand. Simple. Instead of asset, it's a brand. So that's your first paragraph. First paragraph should be defining it. So let's forget about everything and let's go by the first paragraph only. This three lines. Now, how many lines should a paragraph be? It's never fixed. It's not that every paragraph should be five lines or every paragraph should be two lines. No, never fix it like this. This should not be a mindset. It depends on how much you can write. Depends. Sometimes it may be one line, sometimes it may be two, sometimes it may be five, six lines. But okay, minimum there could be anything. It could be one, two, three, anything. But max, keep it five to six lines. Don't exit five to six lines, I would say. Normally you cannot exit also that much because due to time pressure, you will not have that much to write also. Okay, let's say this will be five, six months. So for five, six months, you cannot write more than five lines for one paragraph. Any any paragraph you take. Okay, so if you see the length also, first paragraph is small, second paragraph is lengthier, third is okay, fourth is the smallest. This generally will be the smallest. The last paragraph will be the smallest. It's a summary, it's a conclusion you are giving. Remember, fourth paragraph, the last paragraph, whatever, fourth, fifth, whatever. Last paragraph is always a conclusion. Whether it is consistent, so basically, last paragraph is that you are answering it, answering this one. Whether it is consistent or not, you say it's consistent, it's not consistent. That's it, you are answering in the last paragraph. So don't jump to that in SBR. When you have to answer, you have to come like this only. This order only you have to come. Like this only you have to come. You have to build up your answers. This is the technique you need to build in your professional level paper if you want to succeed. There is no other way around. No shortcut. You cannot say it's consistent. Or it is just you cannot answer the, this fourth paragraph and say, okay, I've answered the question. Maybe you will just get one mark, that's it. Not even one mark, maybe half a mark. Because you didn't justify why it is consistent or why it is not so. Okay. Now this is set up. So let's read the first paragraph only. Okay. Because since few answers, I'll be just going through the answer they have given before I start writing answers. Because if I start writing answers, you will not understand initial. Okay, that I can do it in the revision kit uh, solutions. Okay, with revision kit questions, yes, but for test understanding, I, it's not so lengthy. So that's why I have presented you with answers. I'm making this very clear from now because in the previous, uh, when I previously made lectures, what happened was they used to think that I used to read from the textbook or read from the answers and it's not adding any value. So that's why I'm telling from before now, test understanding, I'll be doing like this. At least now I'm showing how I came to the answer. Earlier I just used to read. But uh, revision kit solutions, yes, it's a lengthy question. So I will not be reading word by word, but there I'll be doing the answer. Practical, I'll be showing you the thing, how to write, do the answer. Okay. So first one, the brand is an economic resource controlled by the bottle. What is it? It's a definition of an asset. So when it's a definition of an asset, what should you write? Whether it's controlled by the company or not. Controlled by whom? Controlled by bottle. This is very important in your answer. It's an economic resource controlled by bottle or not. Is it controlled? Yes. How do you know? Because, the, because of the reputation, whatever the benefit is, it's going to the bottle only. Whatever the profit, whatever the benefit, who is getting it? Who is getting the inflow? Who is getting the cash? Who is getting the revenue? It is the, it is the bottle only. The company is getting it. So that's the next line. It has the potential to bring economic benefits because of the exposure that this receive. You see, just having saying that it's an economic resource, it is giving economic benefit, it's not enough. You need to link this to the case study. How? By saying that bottle is, is uh, the bottle branded is receiving. Right? The benefit. They are receiving the benefit, right? Because of that exposure of that brand, they are receiving the economic benefit. So two things. One is economic benefit. One is the control. Who? The bottle. So write the name of the company in your answer. Mention bottle brand. 
okay bottle branded books receive it's a book company so it's a book company mentioned it so they are receiving the economic benefit these two things now coming to the second paragraph how do you start the second paragraph first paragraph okay i will write it here because first remember whenever you have to recognize something it should meet the definition of an element element is an asset income expense liability equity so it meets the definition of an asset now second what what is the second thing did i tell when you have to recognize see this is theory that you studied remember in the slides we went through the theory now is the time you are applying it in the answer definition of asset what was the next thing when we studied recognition definition of whether whether it is relevant and it gives a faithful representation or not so the relevance and faithful representation this bit will highlight it relevant and faithful whether it meets these two criteria or not so that should be a second paragraph whether it is giving a relevant and faithful representation so first let's talk about relevant whether it is relevant or not next we'll talk about faithful representation in the same paragraph only you can talk because they are both come together okay so despite meeting the definition of an element you have to link from here you just cannot uh, jump to the relevant information you first need to say from here to here link you see the link but it's in a different paragraph because this is just a definition of an asset this paragraph this is talking about relevant and this one so despite meeting the definition of an element it meets the definition of an element an asset yes the brand the brand what is not recognized the brand is not recognized in the financial statement you need to write it it is recognized or it is not recognized after meeting the definition of an asset first you write that then we'll talk about faithful or relevant information first you need to know after meeting the definition of an asset does it is it recognized or not it is not recognized in the financial statements why then talk about conceptual frame you see however the conceptual framework now bring the conceptual framework's knowledge here you need to understand the scenario that is happening one after the other the event the, the order this order you have to know this order if you know this order it's very easy for you to write answer in this order the problem is we don't know how to start how to end we are so hurry to just answer whether it is consistent or not that's it khalas will go to the next question then next question then third question but we are not working on building up the answer what is the flow where to start how what should be the middle part and then how do you end ending everyone knows obviously but the starting no one knows and no one taught you also no one works on it also that's why you lost a lot of marks valuable marks you lose in this stage first stage, first three stages only first three paragraphs and even if you write you write it very general to your what you have studied in your textbook as it is economic resource controlled by this one economic benefit. no you have to talk about the bottle because that is the name that is the company you have to talk about whether they have the control or not whether bottle is receiving the economic benefit or not so instead of asset you are writing bottle because brand is an uh, you are writing the brand or the bottle because that is an asset the brand is an asset here just replace it instead of writing the company who is controlling bottle bottle is the company here so you are just replacing the word that's it same thing only you are writing so what now you have to talk about what conceptual frameworks talks about it conceptual framework states that element should only be recognized if it gives relevant information or a faithful representation okay so regarding faithful represent if there is a high degree of measurement uncertainty then recognition may not provide a faithful representation why did we talk about this we also spoke about when it's not relevant to provide we also talked about when it's not uh, providing a faithful representation but we didn't talk about uh, relevance we talked about only 
why it might not provide uh, why recognition might not provide a faithful representation why did we talk about the last few lines you need that for your later answer third paragraph that's why see relevant part is not so important when it comes to internally generated goodwill but faithful representation is and what what is talked about faithful representation that if it is very difficult to measure then do not recognize it it will not give a faithful representation that will lead you to your third paragraph why now we can talk about brand can you measure reliably the cost of the internally generated brand can you know what is the cost of your brand exactly can you measure and tell no that's why you have talked about it so third paragraph you are relating it to the brand again bringing answer faithful representation the measurement uncertainty part back to the brand you are linking this to the brand now measurement uncertainty in the third paragraph i don't know how much you can visualize it and you can understand the flow but i'm assuming you can if you cannot then do let me know in the comment or email, send me an email because this you should know this flow because it will help you in sbr throughout after this whatever answer you do questions you do you will always think this flow how do i start how many paragraphs how do i go to the next paragraph so the cost of an internally generated brand cost of what you need to write the name internally generated brand because that is what we are talking about in this case study cannot be reliably measured cannot be reliably measured after you talked about conceptual frameworks faithful representation that's the knowledge part now you are applying it in the third paragraph application so you cannot measure it reliably if you have taken the brand from someone else you okay you know this is much this much you have paid to acquire that brand you know this is the cost but if it is you who have internally generated over the years how do you know what is the cost of the brand you cannot measure it reliably right because cost of setting up and developing that brand you cannot separate them from the your operating cost every day day to day cost can you separate it no it comes together the cost so because of that the fair value of the brand is very difficult to determine because brands are unique you cannot even find the fair value in the market if you want to go and find the fair value okay what is fair value by the way on that also we have a separate standard ifrs 30 fair value is meant for a particular asset or liability what is the price in the market if you want to sell for example i want to sell my asset today or my car today what is the value of that car in the market today what is the price that is known as fair value so if this brand if i want to find the market uh, sorry a price from the market can i find for this brand still you cannot find it even the fair value you cannot find for this brand forget about the cost fair value also you cannot find why because brands are unique your brands are unique that person's brand is unique if it's a common product yes for cars mobile phone you can easily find the fair value because they are homogeneous product identical product is the same my phone is same as the other phone are there are so many similar phones which are available on the market so prices are same but if it's unique this phone is unique that phone has different feature prices will not be same so brands are also like that your company's brand is something which is not there for the other company's brand they will not be same it's unique because of that because of its uniqueness you cannot find a fair value for that brand so you cannot measure it reliably so what else fourth is your conclusion conclusion just two lines last paragraph so does after all what you have written yes it's an asset but conceptual framework says it has to be faithfully represent and it cannot be faithfully represent because you cannot measure the cost reliably nor the fair value it seems that accounting treatment of the brand per is 38 is consistent with the conceptual framework you see it's consistent how do you know is 38 is not recognizing it they say internally generated goodwill should not be sorry internally generated brand should not be recognized conceptual framework also says do not recognize because it is not giving a faithful representation measurement uncertainty is there so both are saying the same thing therefore it's consistent understood this is how you need to write an answer for svr at least this question will be around four to five marks so this is how you get your four to five marks one mark let's say for each paragraph maybe 
or maybe two marks for your second paragraph because there you have explained a lot okay so now let us go to derecognition when do you derecognize derecognition the same you have done recognition you should also know how to do derecognition so derecognition is when you have removed some or all it could be partial derecognition or fully you are derecognizing an asset or a liability from the statement of financial position okay because asset or liability are recognized in the statement of financial position balance sheet right so you remove it that is derecognition and this normally occurs when the entity either loses the control of the asset or has no present obligation for a liability then you derecognize derecognizing any transferred expired or consumed component maybe it is transferred maybe it is expired or consumed okay after you derecognize what should you do then when you are selling of something you are having some profit or loss some gain or loss you are incurring recognize that gain or loss okay and recognize any retained component let's say you have partially you have sold of an asset or right not entirely so you recognize what you have retained retain component you recognize whatever you have sold of you de recognize and gain and loss you recognize okay so you recognize gain and loss and retain component de recognize only what you have transferred or what expired or what consumed component okay sometimes an entity might appear to have transferred an asset or a liability remember but still de recognition is not appropriate it looks like you have transferred an asset or a liability still you are not de recognizing that asset or liability why because you are still getting the benefit from that asset or liability one example is leases in leases you do not de recognize an asset you are taking it on a lease so maybe you are not owning an asset but you are having the benefit from that asset you understanding so that you need to understand then we are moving on to the measurement from de recognition to measurement basically all your ifrs standard questions are how you do the recognition or de recognition if it is so mostly recognition de recognition chances are very less like scenarios given are very less on measurement presentation so recognition measurement and how do you present or disclose presentation these are the three areas your sbr is going to focus on whatever the standard is okay so measurement measurement comes after you recognize something if you are not recognizing something how do you measure it understood so something needs to be first recognized for it to be measured so when recognizing the financial statements element must be quantified in monetary terms measurement means you are putting a value to it okay and for this conceptual framework says there are two measurement bases two ways you can measure one is known as historical cost that is your cost model normally most of the standard goes by it and second is known as current value current value means it could be your fair value that is even the market value in use what is the value when you are using it today and current cost okay out of this three it could be anything which is your current value mostly if you see fair value is the one which is the mostly asked okay out of more than value in use and current cost but it could be the other two also so it gives you an option to go by historical cost or current value that's how you are going to measure it selecting a measurement base how do you select a measurement base see when you are selecting remember you have to give your preference to relevance whether measuring it in such, such a way is relevant or not your relevance has to be maximized which way is more relevant if you know that measuring this cost asset in a historical cost is more relevant than current value then you have to choose cost cost value uh, historical cost otherwise current value understood even if they are giving a choice does not mean you choose according to whatever you like they are giving a choice with a restriction there that relevance has to be maximized okay you see how are you going to uh, maximize the relevance look at the characteristics of an asset or a liability is the value of the asset changing very frequently or is it maintaining their historical cost over a long period of time second ways in which asset or liability contribute to future cash flows how are they contributing to the future cash flows these two things okay so accordingly you have to decide 
Now, before moving to the presentation and disclosure, we are going to show this with an example where you are given a choice. So here it's an example of selecting a measurement basis. Okay, missed purchase and investment property in a prime location. Property prices are increasing. Property prices are increasing in this area. As such, the value of the property is uh, it is very vulnerable to the market factor. Okay, very sensitive. And could substantially differ from the initial substantially differ from the initial purchase price paid by missed. Okay, now IS40. It is an investment property, remember. So IS40. What does IS40 say? It gives you a choice. IS40 gives you a choice or not? Two choices. One is either fair value model, either cost model. Okay. IS40 says use fair value model if they intend to sell the asset. Why? Because this faithfully represents the future cash flow they will receive from his eventual uh, disposal. Cost model if they have no intention of selling. Because this best matches the rental income that they are generated with the cost of the asset. If they have no intention of selling their property, whatever the rent they are receiving will be the cost of the asset. So the cost model. If they want to sell the asset, fear fair value model because it faithfully represents the cash flow that they are going to receive in the future. So fair value model. You understood? So what whichever is faithfully representing? Okay, where relevance and faithful representation is maximized, you choose the model. Okay. Note that they might have no intention of selling the asset, but they still might use fair value, even if they have no intention of selling. Why? Because it provides more relevant information. How? Especially when the property prices are rising, isn't it? And they told it's substantially different from the initial purchase price. So in that case, even if they have no intention of selling the asset still fair value will be better one because relevant information is there relevance is maximized because property prices are increasing so during property price where property prices are rising best is use fair value model if they are stable property prices are not increasing so much you can go by the cost model why it is relevant because they can charge higher rent to his tenant you know and greater net cash inflow with animal missed to charge if the go by the fair value model during when property prices are increasing presentation and disclosure presentation and disclosure does not mean whatever is there you just present and disclose you need to strike a balance between allowing entities to flexibly report relevant information and those that are confidential which needs not need to be disclosed okay and also you need information you need to present those information where you can do a comparison from year to year or with other entities second entity specific information is more useful than standardized descriptions okay try to give information which are very specific to your industry or very specific information Okay, they will be more useful when you present them for the users. Then duplication makes financial information less understandable. So when you try to duplicate financial information, see when you present and disclose, mostly you present those information which are not given in the financial statements or not financial in nature. Because if you try to duplicate exactly what is given in the financial state, uh, statement of financial position or statement of profit and loss or statement of cash flow, it makes it's like you are duplicating it. So when you are duplicating something, it becomes less understandable. You are not adding any value to it. So through your presentation and disclosure, you are adding those things which are not there in your financial statements. You are adding a value. It's like you are enhancing the understanding of the entity better for the user through your presentation and disclosure. Then comes classification. Okay, you need to know how to classify an asset and liability into separate component like long term asset, sorry, non current asset, current asset, non current liability, current liability. Because your classification is going to be very relevant, it's a very relevant information. You might think it does not matter so much, both are asset or both are liability. So you can classify it in any way. No, it provides a relevant information. 
Why? Because every component, there's a reason why they're classified in a different way, because each component have different characteristics. Your non-current is different from your current asset. Your non-current is different from your current liability. Characteristics is different, that's why. And you cannot even offset your asset with liability. Looks like asset minus liability is equity. Deduct your liability from asset, no. Asset needs to be presented separately. Liability needs to be uh, se presented separately in your statement of financial position if you see. Why? Because they are dissimilar items. They are not similar items. Similar nature of item. That's why you cannot offset them together. Offset means you deduct one from the other and then show the net result. No. It is not appropriate. You cannot do that. One example is this. Okay. At the reporting date, what will own 10 million to a bank? Okay. Out of this 10 million, 1 million is what? 1 million is repayment within 12 months. So this 1 million will be presented as what? Current liability. Because within 12 months, you are going to pay this. And the remaining 9 is presented as a non-current liability. So you see the classification. 1 million is current. 9 is non-current. So classifying the liability in this way gives more additional information to the user so that they know what is the impact on the future cash flows and how solvent the company is rather than showing 10 minus 1 as 9 9 as a liability just 9 deducting that 10 from 1 and showing 9 as a liability it's better to show 1 as a non current 9 as a non current okay then we are moving on to aggregation where you aggregate sum up add similar items together and show rather than showing it in separate separate things that is also allowed okay but that is for small items okay material items you need to show them separately but where items are not so material they are of similar nature you can add them together and show that is known as aggregation okay and also aggregation is useful because uh, when you try to show too much of detail users become confused what is relevant what is important what is not important so rather it shows a summary of information that is more useful because but remember too much of aggregation hides relevant information sometimes too much of uh, aggregation adding is not good you need to show certain information especially those of material nature separately not aggregate them together okay and different levels of aggregation will be required throughout the financial statements okay for example statement of profit or loss may be heavily aggregated if you see statement of profit or loss heavily aggregated under that uh, your uh, what is this finance cost we have different types of cost they are labeled uh, classified in different way distribution cost under distribution cost we'll be having five six cost but when statement of profit and loss is presented to you they don't write five six cost like that maybe it under notes it will come separately but in the statement of profit and loss they say distribution cost finance cost sales cost right or uh, operating cost administrative cost right but in the disclosure notes you will see the disaggregate okay they dis disaggregate the information the detail information will be there in your notes then we are moving on to profit and loss and other comprehensive income okay we are mostly talking about other comprehensive income here okay this is very important for your sbr because most of the time questions has been asked from this area why it is better to show under other comprehensive income why not in the profit and loss this question has been asked maybe for five to six months several times it has been asked so make sure that you focus on this area it might okay sometimes some income and expense you cannot present them under profit and loss normally how do you present it needs to be presented under other comprehensive income there's a separate section that comes below profit or loss okay and when do you recognize it very less items are recognizing comprehensive income not all what are those items especially when you are remeasuring an item to the current value remeasuring means what from cost to fair value you are going to, mostly you are taking a family model you are measuring an asset or a liability remeasuring i would say to fair value fair value is the current value you know mostly during that condition items are shown under co other comprehensive income even when you go through a specific standard ifrs or is standard you will see certain standards say okay recognize this under the comprehensive income measure to fair value recognize this under the comprehensive income you will not tell you will not 
see them telling recognize it under profit and loss few standards says yes recognize it under profit and loss few but majority of it says when it is to the fair value are the comprehensive income what does this mean this means that profit or loss provides more relevant information okay a more faithful representation is provided if you present those income and expense to other comprehensive income and keep whatever is there in the profit and loss this will make profit and loss more relevant as well as it will give a faithful representation also okay but remember it's not forever that items under other comprehensive income will stay there sometimes not all the time some cases some standard says you can reclassify them back to profit and loss in the future the income and expense that is that you have included under other comprehensive income you can reclassify them to profit and loss in the future but remember you can only reclassify them if doing so results in your profit and loss being more relevant then only okay standard says clearly every standard says very clearly whether you can reclassify or you cannot reclassify so you don't have to worry about it you just have to memorize that list okay but the board also says that reclassification is not appropriate if there is no clear basis for identifying the amount of timing of reclassification you don't know when uh, it will be reclassified to fair value the timing you don't know the amount also you don't know in that case you cannot reclassify it to profit and loss it will forever stay in other comprehensive income only then one example to understand this even better let's say entity a owns land and building and they are using revaluation model under is 16 okay because there are two models cost model or revaluation model they say okay revaluation model so at reporting date entity revalued assets 250 to 300 what does is 16 say 50 is the gain right 50 million is a revaluation gain where do you recognize this revaluation gain Profit or loss or other comprehensive income? Other comprehensive income book. Why? Because you are using it, you are using the current value. Current value here is fair value. You are revaluing from 250 to 300. In that, revaluation gain will go to other comprehensive income. Correct? But property, second paragraph says property, plan, and equipment is not held for trading. Okay? It is instead used more than 12 months. So in this case, in this case, including this 50 million gain in profit and loss, in the profit and loss would not offer a faithful representation. That means it's good only. It is correct to put it under the comprehensive income. If you put this 50 million gain in profit and loss, it is it is not a faithful representation. Why? Which item do you write in profit and loss? That item, if it is held for trading within 12 months short term within 12 months whatever you are having profit and loss only those items but this one you are not held for trading if it was held for trading okay 50 million gain you can recognize it in profit and loss but if you are using something holding something for more than 12 months it is not under trading it does not come under trading more than 12 months you cannot put it on a profit and loss you need to put it on the other comprehensive income the 50 million gain understood now let us do test your understanding to on cryptocurrency before we summarize test your understanding two is on cryptocurrency okay so using your conceptual framework this is how your questions will be asked in the exam also actual exam also using your conceptual framework discuss how an entity might account for investment in cryptocurrency that it holds to trade remember hold to trade when something is hold to trade the meaning changes when some also something when it is not hold for trade that's why they have written it specifically there's a reason why they have written it okay so now let us read the case study a bit more cryptocurrencies are digital currencies that operate independently of a central bank okay some businesses now accept cryptocurrencies in place of traditional currencies the market price is highly volatile that means it's not stable it keeps changing very rapidly so if the exchange okay when the quoted prices is low investors can have large returns okay and they can sell when the quoted price rises okay but it's problematic regarding cryptocurrency has been a problem why because they are not following 
uh, within the scope of an IFRS or IS standard. Do we have a IFRS or IS standard for cryptocurrency now currently? No. So that's why we have to refer to the conceptual framework. Okay. Now let's see the answer. If you see the answer, let me take you. It's very lengthy, right? Should you write this much? The question comes. No, you should not write this much. Why? Because when answer is given to you, they always give you a uh, answer to learn from it. Okay. There are some things which does not come as an answer. Like they are giving the theory part of it. Also, they are writing in the answer and making the answer very long, which is not required. It is just for understanding that they have given it. Okay. So since we have already went through it, we know what measurement basis is we know what is recognition de recognition is we know measurement things we don't have to write it again and waste time we can quickly just jump to the answer but here they have done it if you see the first paragraph one of the purpose of conceptual framework when i for a standard applies to a particular transaction all these things is repeated we have not we have we went through this remember the first slide we opened purpose of conceptual framework three reasons one is for the user one is for the preparers one is for the board when no particular IFR standard use conceptual framework okay here they have given the definition of an asset also according to the conceptual framework so you can make this a bit shorter okay actually it depends on the number of the marks i cannot say because here the marks are not given to you let's say this is for 10 12 marks then this answer is okay it justifies it okay so how do you start this answer let me tell you first understand you are using do we have a standard or not okay first question is so basically for i've shown you in test understanding one how we go in different paragraphs i'm not going to repeat it here we just need to know in each paragraph what we are going to write so first question is do we have ifrs or is standard or not that is your first paragraph answer that question no we don't so they use conceptual framework instead okay second paragraph says definition of an asset why because it's an intangible asset so you have to talk about i don't write intangible asset obviously intangible asset definition they didn't give in the conceptual framework they just give asset broadly asset so that only you can write okay so first you have to see whether cryptocurrency means the definition or meets the definition of an element element means is it asset or not that's why second paragraph again talks about definition and asset from your conceptual framework. We know the definition. I'm not going to repeat it again. Just say after the definition whether cryptocurrency means the definition of an asset or not. So cryptocurrency, yes, it means this definition. Okay, because you're going to have economic benefit by trading it. Third paragraph, you come to whether recognition comes or not. After definition of an asset, always this is the method, stage. First, definite whether it is defined as an asset or a liability. After that, whether it is recognized or not recognized. Then we are coming to the measurement. So if you go this order, two, three, and four. First is definition of asset or a liability. Okay. Second is recognition or derecognition. Okay then comes measurement and this you have to link it with what cryptocurrency whether cryptocurrency is defined as an asset or not whether cryptocurrency will be recognized or not whether cryptocurrency will be measured in what so these are the three questions you are solving okay so here we are going to talk about recognition third paragraph is on recognition fourth paragraph if you see is on measurement do not confuse one with the other and do not write them together this will make your life very easy to write answers also. Okay. You have to obviously practice a bit with your conscious mind. Once you reach a stage, okay. Once you have done so many questions, you will reach a stage where sub, like you don't have to think automatically. You will know how many paragraphs you have to write, what you have to write in each paragraph. It will just come to you. Mark my words. Not, it will not happen in the beginning stage. Okay. Now you have to consciously use your brain and think. Later, automatically, after you have done 10 20 questions on uh, crypto, like on asset, you will know define, recognize, measure, define, recognize, measurement. You will know it. That's why you need to practice a lot of questions. That's why practice is for not to perfect an answer and get 100 out of 100. 
okay so we know when it is recognized when it is uh, relevant and faithful representation i am just going a bit faster because we have already done a similar industry understanding one but that time it was a brand this is a cryptocurrency there we had a standard we just had to see whether it is consistent or not here no standard whether it means the definition whether it is relevant whether it is faithful representation or not okay so here for cryptocurrency recognition is appropriate why because you are trading this cryptocurrency that means you are going to get a future cash flow so it's relevant future cash flow means you can faithfully you don't have to think about whether you can measure it or not you are going to get that cash flow so it's relevant also as well as faithfully represented also so recognition in this case is appropriate you see whether measurement how do you measure or recognition is appropriate or not always at the end you have to write end of the paragraph but first you have to give the definition from the conceptual framework when to recognize then you will say whether cryptocurrency means that recognition or not okay first the knowledge part then the application to cryptocurrency first the knowledge part then the application to cryptocurrency that's how it is this is only simple thing you need to understand in sbr you understood this you understood the game knowledge apply knowledge application knowledge application that's why the answer looks very big why the answer is very big and how to come with answer you don't know because you are trying to memorize and break your head now let us go to the measurement so conceptual framework also says measure historical current value now apply it also says another thing that even if they have given it the measurement basis let's talk about the measurement basis if relevance is maximized how relevance is maximized characteristics of asset or liability way asset and liabilities contribute to future cash flow this is all knowledge part pure knowledge we have just went through the slides of this so it's just the reputation of it now we are coming to the application okay so regarding future cash flow we don't know characteristics of an asset or liability about this point we cannot talk but about this point we can talk because they have mentioned about cash flow we are trading it so in terms of future cash flow okay when entity sells investments in cryptocurrency they can benefit from their fair value gain isn't it or not we are talking about fair value gain in the market what you're going to get when you're selling it okay but what about the historical cost of uh, cryptocurrency this will differ significantly from the value remember market is very volatile so in this case fair value works better than historical cost for cryptocurrency okay so in this case what does it mean fair value is more suited because it's more relevant and timely information to shareholders so this is more relevant than historical cost okay fair value i'm not reading the entire thing i'm just telling you the main things from the paragraph main answer rest all you can write on your own and come to that solution okay then they are talking about profit and loss okay conceptual framework knows about profit and loss and when you have to write it under the comprehensive income when you remeasure it an item to the current value like if you have taking fair value you recognize it under the comprehensive income or the profit and loss so you have to know conceptual framework when you are selling it the gain and loss where are you recognizing it that's why we are talking about profit and loss so this is again the knowledge part if you see okay you recognize, you recognize it in pnl if it's more relevant and faithful representation this always will be repeated in sbl sbr sorry so never forget these two things this two are like your best friend it will never leave you okay uh yeah so cryptocurrency is highly volatile use this from the case study because this is highly volatile what what, what does it mean the value is likely to be extracted from a short term sale okay what does it mean gain and losses recognize it in profit and loss not in other comprehensive income it's kind of shocking right suddenly why it is here under uh, profit and loss not other comprehensive income even if you are using uh, fair value because it's for short term sale i told you look at the nature of the currency nature of the asset short term sale less than 12 months so it makes sense that it's better to write it in the profit and loss because this will provide more relevant information and finally in conclusion i told you last para is always conclusion 
by applying the conceptual framework you see you are applying the conceptual framework now earlier what you did you do in test understanding one you were seeing whether is 38 was consistent with conceptual framework because you already had a standard here you are no standard so no need to worry everything all the knowledge will come from conceptual framework understand this thing first then you will know where to write your answers from it's just one from one area you have to take information usually when there are no conceptual framework answers are easier because you are taking all information from one area you only have to think in one direction when you have standards it becomes a little difficult you have to know conceptual framework knowledge also as well as that particular standard also okay so in applying what is an up finally you are writing conclusion everything that means what is the accounting treatment this is what you are writing in conclusion all the time in sbr this is the term accounting treatment accounting treatment accounting treatment never forget so accounting treatment in what investment in cryptocurrency would be what remeasure the investment to fair value correct but recognize it under profit and loss the gain, the income or the expense you need to remeasure it the investment to the fair value and whatever the gain and loss recognize it in profit and loss because it's for short term set this much you need to understand that's it now before summarizing the lecture let us go through the criticisms of financial reporting you need to know this why financial reporting is so much criticized number 1 because it is based on historical information if you see stakeholders they want information in the future what is the impact in the future what would be the profit in the future what would be the cash flow in the future but if you go through your statement of financial position they show asset and liability was was held previously in the like historic asset and liability if you go through your profit and loss they will show you profit and loss which happened uh, which will be outdated by the time you have to make a decision in the future same like cash flow second unrecognized assets and liabilities like according to is 38 some even though they meet the definition of an asset they are not recognized so you will never know the true value of an asset looking at a statement of financial position because they only show recognized asset clutter nowadays if you see financial statements are so much of detail there's so much with disc, uh, disclosures and notes so much of clutter that users actually don't know what is relevant what is not important what is uh, important financial non financial information okay they give information see looking at your revenue or your cost or your net profit you will not be able to understand what are the reasons behind the success of your company why because it's not always financial thing there are some non financial reasons also why your company is successful for example maybe the success of your company is because of the employee that you have skills of your employee or the or the value of your brand or the reputation that you have all those things you cannot measure it and put it in the financial statements but they are there right so just look at the net profit will not help, let you know that how valuable your staff is how skillful they are you know estimates when you are making in the financial report you have to make so much of estimates it's not just everything is very objective there are a lot of estimates like depreciation you have to make an estimate the rate the method that you have to choose straight line versus reducing balance you are making an estimate and in estimates there could be errors so it's not exactly very accurate to say professional judgment there are some areas where you have to make a professional judgment especially those areas where you have been given accounting choices accounting policy choices like for example is 16 cost or historical sorry cost or revaluation model you have to make a professional judgment and professional judgment is not easy you might be questioned also for those if you cannot give evidence for why you have chosen a particular method you have to give a reason for it use of historical cost most areas you are using historical cost for example current assets that you are holding like buildings land machinery that is there in a statement of financial position they are what historical cost but by the time maybe in 2 to 3 years if the value keeps increasing they might be outdated the information might no longer be useful let's say property price increasing so of no use because you are taking decision based on the statement of financial position then comes the policy choices yes sometimes you are given the policy choices and when you are given the choices is more difficult actually because at least if you are given something you comply with it you follow the rule but what if the choices are given 
you might sometimes choose those policy to manipulate the financial statements for your advantage right so it becomes very difficult for the uh, auditors or the stakeholders to find out why such a particular policy choice whether it is beneficial or not so that's it for this lecture and make sure that this lecture is the first lecture that you begin your sbr with if you start like this okay and then you go with the specific standard you basically need to follow the order that i am doing if you do that you will no longer you will uh, you will be lost or you will go wrong anywhere okay if you follow this there's a reason why i've started with this even in your textbook if you see this is the first lecture this is the first chapter that they have started with there's a reason why they have started with this chapter okay but i'm not following the textbook order only the first two lectures i'm going to follow the first two after that i'm going to follow in a chronological order okay so we are starting with number one we started discussing what is the purpose of conceptual framework there were three purpose that was given what is it for all the users to interpret the meaning of frs how to put it for the preparers those who want to prepare and where and for the first first for the board where no particular standard has been given you use conceptual framework second we went through the qualitative characteristics two fundamental characteristics relevance faithful representation four enhancing characteristics understandability timeliness comparability and verifiability elements of financial statements the five elements assets liability equity income assets sorry income expenses then we went through recognition derecognition okay sorry it is not recognition and recognition it is recognition and derecognition it's a correction there okay when do you recognize when it means the element of uh, as the elements of a financial statements it's not enough after it means the elements whether it will be, give a faithful representation and relevance to it okay derecognition when you have sold off the asset when you no longer control the asset when there's no present obligation for the liability okay and if it's a partial derecognition you recognize what is retained and recognize gain or loss and derecognize what is not there okay but sometimes when you are still not having the asset you might have to recognize it you cannot derecognize for example lease because you are getting the cash inflow or an outflow or an outflow you have to pay for that asset or a liability then we went through measurement okay we have given choices historic cost or current value okay measurement basis was given for example we choose we need to choose the policy which maximize the relevance how nature of the asset or liability and nature of the how we are getting the cash inflow and outflow in the future then presentation disclosure classification okay how do you present current non current based on the feature okay you disclose when you do not recognize it as a note and you classify okay you do not present too much you do not present too little it just needs to be relevant okay aggregation you sometimes need to aggregate if they are of similar nature and they are not so material you can aggregate and show because too detail will then clutter it and it will make it very difficult for the user to understand what is important from what is not important so you aggregate then we went through profit and loss and other comprehensive income why to put under the comprehensive income usually when you remeasure to the fair value you recognize the gain and loss under other comprehensive income okay but not all depends on the standard sometimes you can remeasure you can reclassify to profit and loss sometimes it is forever in the other comprehensive income then we ended with criticisms of financial reporting i think 9 or 10 criticisms we just went through the list clutter historic cost historical information then uh, financial non financial information right things like that so that's it for this lecture thanks for watching and see you in the next lecture where we will be discussing professional ethics another very important lecture which comes in your question to ethical question no matter what you will get you will get 100% you will get an ethical question in sbr in your question number 2 with your prof two marks of professional skills will be there for that ethical question so that's why that will be your question number uh, lecture 2 so see you in lecture 2 until then thanks for watching